Hi everyone and welcome to And So On. My name is Lisa and today I have another installment from my capsule wardrobe. All right, so I am back with some decisions. Thank you so much for all of your ideas and all of your votes on the last video. I especially appreciated all of the links to the amazing coats that you guys had to recommend. And there were so many amazing suggestions. I wanna share them. So I have all of my fabrics. I'm gonna tell you what I've decided to do with them. And I also have a little bonus project that's gonna come at the end. I also love reading your comments that you went over and checked out the fabric sales and that you really, really enjoyed them. If you bought some fabric from them, please do link me up so I, or let me know which ones you bought because I'm so curious. Um, but I love that you guys also agreed that it was a really interesting and unique site. And I hope that you all found some pretties, if not to buy, at least to inspire. So the Fabric Sales has sponsored this series of videos by giving me these fabrics to work with. So please do head over and check out their site if you haven't had a chance yet. I know for sure you are not gonna be disappointed. Okay, so to start off, I have this black wool. It's a stretch wool. And of course there's a hair on it. There's a hair on everything in my house. <laughs> black stretch wool. Um, really nice, really cozy. Someone was concerned it might be see-through. I don't think when you wear it, it'll be see-through. So I've decided for this one to do the Berta Easy Skirt with the drawstring waist. I think that's gonna be the most practical and, um, and the most comfortable. I think I can wear it over leggings. Um, yeah, so I think that's the one I'm gonna go for, for that. Next is the Stretch Cotton Twill. The color is kind of a greeny khaki it's about that's about right and as i said before i'm doing the nita trousers with this i actually got to wear my nita trousers today i'll put in a picture because now we're starting to get autumn weather and so i got to wear them because i made my last ones in the spring and so you know stretch suiting in the spring was a little bit hot and so i didn't really get to wear them much so i wore them today and i'm like oh i'm gonna get so much wear out of these the fit on them is so perfect i'm so pleased so the only difference with this one well a couple differences i guess i'm going to take out the front pleats and make them flat front and she has um uh, Amy Nicole has on her blog a tutorial to do that. I am going to do the welt pocket because I want another kick at the can on that one. And the other thing is I think I'm going to take off the folded cuff at the bottom. I think I'm going to make the cuff or just make it straight. Um, now I also might add a teeny bit of length. Tell me what you think when you look at this, if it needs just a teeny bit of length. I really did it a little bit by eye because these are, um, cropped pants like the pattern is for cropped pants so i had to add some length in order to make them full length so it wasn't an exact science is what i'm saying <laughs> so if you think that it needs a little more length let me know but i think in these i even debated just today i was thinking i wonder if i should make them cargo pants and add like some side cargo pockets which would make them more casual. But I mean, they're cotton twill pants and I already have a formal trousers version of this. So let me know what you think about the cargo, yay or nay. Let me know below. Okay, then for the two tops, I got a little tripped up. I'm not gonna lie. It's taken me longer to get started on this because I couldn't, I couldn't visualize for some reason everything together. And what I finally came up with is for the red, if you remember, I had a Berta, a couple Berta ones that I was thinking of, because for some reason I fixated on the red being the statement piece, and that put a lot of pressure on it to maybe be something it doesn't need to be. And then all of a sudden today I went, you know what? I think I want this beautiful red, and it looks very orangey. It's not, it's, well, I mean, it's, it's a tomato red. It is a tomato red, but it's not orange at all. It's red. I think I'm gonna make the Tabor V-neck out of this one. I was gonna do it out of the stripe, but I think a V-neck, classic V-neck red wool sweater top, I think would be really practical and, and very much my style. So that kind of unlocked it for me and went, yes, that's what it, that's what it needs. So this will be the Tabor V-neck. That is printed off and ready to go. And then for this with the stripe, I'm gonna go for the Monroe turtleneck. As it gets colder, I realize that I really would like a turtleneck. I don't get them very often. The other great thing about having a turtleneck is I have all these scars now that I'm knitting, and sometimes they're not made of the softest material or the softest wool, right? Like they're made from, uh, from a rustic wool that I don't necessarily want up against my neck. So by having a turtleneck, I'll be able to wrap whatever it is around my neck and not worry about it being picky. So Tabor V-neck in the red, and uh, Monroe turtleneck free pattern from Tasuti in the stripe. 
Okay, second to last, because I do have one more, is again, this amazing coating. So you guys came up with so many awesome ideas. And, and then some of you were very passionate about it not being a moto jacket. <laughs> you were like, no, not a moto jacket. Fair enough, fair enough. I love opinions, I love opinions. Give me your opinions. Um, I, that, that, I love that. And so I started to think, again, it came down to visualizing, what do I want to wear? Like I could look at this and go, oh, I'd love a, a, a more aviator style is actually what I was thinking. I'd love an aviator style, style jacket, but what are you going to wear? What is really gonna be practical? And I asked my friend Dallas, cause she watches all my videos and she is quite invested <laughs> in, my, in what I make. I can like give her, you know, you know, this or this, and she's always on the ball and she has great style, so, um, and she knows me really well. So she suggested that I go with the Berta Easy, the first one that I, I think it was the first one that I showed you guys, because it's the most my style, it's the most flexible, and with that big open shell collar, you'll be able to feature the other side of the fabric, this herringstone, herringstone, herringbone, <laughs> side of the fabric, which actually even has a different feel to it. You know, it's, it's really nice. And so I really want to feature, you know, one against the other here. I want, I want you to see these two patterns play against each other. Um, lots of people were pretty passionate about it being um, reversible. I'm not going to promise on that one because I'm just not sure I can deliver. Um, but I can certainly do it unlined because of this fabric and where I live. This is going to be a mid-season coat. I don't need it to be fully lined and, and super, super warm. So that's going to be the Berta. Okay, and then the last surprise that I have is a from, actually, this is from Minerva. So I have this gorgeous Liberty Silk. This is a Silk Charmeuse. I think it is 100% silk. Look at this pattern. Again, I don't want it to blow out by holding it too close. If I hold it back here, you can, the, the blue is quite deep, but you also get the oranges and the reds. And for this, I am making the Coville dress, which you guys saw me make, I'll put in a picture. I did my, um, my toile already, and this arrived in the mail. So this is the Coville, let me open it, and I'm gonna cut out the crinkles, okay. So this was also given to me in exchange for making it. Actually, that's not true. I just asked to review it and they sent it to me. As you know, for my toile, I really like the pattern, but I felt that the chambray was maybe a little too heavy. So the suggested fabric for this as the most ideal is this silk charmeuse. And so I think that's gonna be absolutely gorgeous. So on the back here, we have the fabric selection. So yeah, uh, silk crepe, sorry, silk, silk crepe de chine, not silk charmeuse. Silk crepe de chine and inside, okay, so inside, first of all, you get the little tag because Winsome is a, a shop and they do the patterns for some of their best sellers on the side. So you actually get a Winsome uh, tag. So that's really cool. Love that. Put that back after. And then you get a printed, printed off of the uh, pattern instructions, which is just the same as you would receive in the PDF. And then you get, that's my door. All right, kids home from school. <laughs> so here is the pattern pieces. They're on full heavy white paper, really nice quality. Now I already have my PDF version. And so I will be giving away this hard copy when I do the reveal of the dress. So as long as you don't mind this is an open copy, you'll be able to enter. And I can't wait to see how this fabric is gonna play like with this, do you know what I mean? Or even with this, like I think it's gonna be really fun to show how a light silk fabric can still mix into an autumn winter, autumn winter uh, wardrobe, an autumn winter capsule.
Okay guys, I'm gonna go before there are any more interruptions. I know this was a quick one, but I just wanted to update you. Lots more to come. Thank you so much. We just passed 20,000 subscribers. I can't even believe it. I'm gonna have to figure out a great, great giveaway for that as well. But for the moment, I just wanna say thank you. Thank you for coming along. And uh, I can't wait to share more things with you in the upcoming months. All right, I am off. I hope wherever you are, the sun is shining and you are sewing and I will talk to you soon. Bye.